you so much. My name is Frannix Chan. I have about uh, 30 years experience at Stanford, but working both in the pediatric side and the adult side, so it is in that capacity I come to speak with you. Our topic today is actually just this, put Sonic uh, DL to the clinical gamut of testing in a realistic situation, exactly what do we get. Now, I've been long enough around to see about 30 years of development in the CINE technology, starting with the Medical case space, allow us to do breath hole kind of imaging, and then balance SSLP 20 years ago to improve the SNR, then come along, uh, image parallel imaging in spatial and temporal domain, and now with lithic compressed sense with the highest accelerations possible. The immediate gains of all these technologies is to reduce the scan time for a given spatial and temporal resolution, usually at the cost of artifacts and structured noise. Now, these kinds of artifacts turn out limits of the maximum uh, acceleration potentials, even though theoretically you could do better, but when you look at your pictures, when they're highly accelerated, it's from a clinical point of view, and say, eh, do I really trust this? So that actually is the fundamental limitations. Now, for, for the um, deep learning approach to the CINE uh, project, really has to ask the question if we can recover some of those lost fidelity of the images, can we then push the boundary into acceleration further? And using those kind of acceleration, then you can trade off for other stuff. The preliminary study I've shown by Martin, it could be done down to one single uh, respiratory cycle. I mean, it's a cardiac cycle. If that were to happen, a lot of other issues, such as arrhythmia, actually disappear. So that would be the holy grail. Now, today what we wanted to do is to make sure the foundation is solid in real patient populations. So we examined the sonic DL cine as applied in adult populations. My colleague at the Children's Hospital had looked at that on the pediatric side. And specifically, look at diagnostic quality as seen by practicing radiologists and cardiologists. And then we look at, again, traditional volume extractions, ejection fraction, but we go a little further. We want to look at the regional mechanics because this is what adult people always look at. What's the regional wall motions, contractions, and all that? That need to be uh, nailed down. All right. Um, so in the methods, the technique of the Sonic DL, Sonic DL really have two parts. The first part is the CINE sequence that acquired balance SSFP uh, weighted echoes and then offer a sparsely and variably sampled the KT space. Then the reconstruction algorithm is where the magic part is, where the deep learning part in between, this is a, uh, a non-feedback network system whereby they would try to take these parts, for example, the case space, magically produce a CINE on the other side. So um, we recruit our patients that refer to our cardiac MRI on the adult side. Uh, the uh, patients that we recruited from are those indicated for um, ischemic viability study, cardiomyopathy, workup, and arrhythmia. So people with syncope or no arrhythmia, they come in to look for delay enhancement, we recruit them. This is, of course, done under informed consent and IRB supervisions, and it is done on an outpatient um, center setting. So um, we use uniformly a GE Premier 3T system for this task. Um, all these patients undergo their routine a protocol, a viability type protocol, whereby we have a long and short axis SSFP sequences, and we always do our traditional protocol that is accelerated by assets, Fiesta type sequence up to a factor of two, typically 1.5x or two. After the uh, CINE sequences, we'll add another 10 minutes, where it composes of a uh, longer scan over six heartbeat with breath hole, and then there's a three, which is intermediate uh, accelerated scan over three heartbeats. And then two varieties of the single RR. These are acquired only on single heartbeats, either breath hole um, or they are respiratory triggered in under free breathing. Now, this is the primary the sheets. You don't really need to look at it all that deeply. But with that said, the resolution is preserved across all tests so that we keep that constant and then we allow the uh, scan time to free itself. So typically, if described with the longer RR acquisition, of course, the acquisition time is going to be longer, but they span anything from two second acquisitions to about 10 seconds. Now, the image quality are collected from two experienced the CVI reader over a five point scale of 0.5 increments, and we ask them to focus on the left ventricular performances in the adult populations. In the quantitative measurements, we look at the ventricular volume ejection fractions, but also look at the regional figures, such as wall motions, that is displacement of a segment of wall, thickness in diastole, as well as thickening, as in the representation of the contraction. 
All right, the readers are given a dictionary to see how good or bad things are, so they are well standardized. So a grade five will be the pristine pictures on the left side, while grade two, which is the, probably the worst that we have seen in the entire lot, will be uh, toward the right side, we have ghosting and other stuff. In terms of quantification, we use the meta suites, the QMAS version 8.1. Uh, we extract RV and LV binding ejection fractions, and we use a six uh, segment model over a mid sections to quantify for wall motions and, and other wall uh, performance figures. The data analysis is for the image quality we, uh, from each reader. We looked at the student t test as comparing from different acceleration from standards. So it's a pair between the accelerated versus uh, sonic DL versus the uh, traditional asset. For the quantitative measurements, again, the standard is the reference with the asset that we typically acquire, and then we use the bland elements plot to see the differences compared with each of these accelerations. Now, I think this is a actually a very worthwhile uh, slides because it tells you just what the gamuts a patient would put sonic DL um, uh, to, to exercise. So even though the sample point is 39, we got 24 male and 15 female. The age group literally is right off the pediatric and 19 all the way up to 85 year old. The weight group from someone who's underweight 45 to morbidly obese, 180 kilogram. All right. Now the heart rates also we got 40 all the way up to 99. So you test the entire range. That's would ever come to you. The ejection fractions have come from 20%, which is severely depressed, and up to 65%, which is normal. So with all that said, all the patients we recruit, the majority of them come from workup of cardiomyopathy. It could be anything from sarcoidosis, amyloidosis, whatnot. Then the next most common groups are arrhythmia. People who come in with no arrhythmia or clinical symptoms that suggest arrhythmia. And the third most common are various kinds of myocarditis, including COVID, uh, COVID vaccine, and whatnot. Okay, the first thing to look at is the program in scan times. The traditional Fiesta um, scan had a median uh, time about six minute acquisition. It's probably fairly typical representation of someone who's doing one or two slides per breath hole over a maybe 10 or 15 slides or so, and you have to let patient to uh, recover between breathing. So it's a fairly slow pace uh, acquisition. The range is actually quite big, even though on the median is six minutes, it can span up to 15, depending on how the patients can uh, recover for you. So as uh, so you go down to the smaller, uh, higher accelerations uh, um, scan with 3R, for example, the, the strategy we use is not to breath hold over three seconds, but rather you stack up a couple more scans. So in 3R, typically we do four slides um, before we let the patient breathe again. So by doing so, you need less number of breath hold in order to achieve the entire gamut of scan that we need to do. So for three RR, we typically can do that under three minutes and one RR typically about less than two, one and a half minutes. All right, so here are some examples on how they look and how to read grade them. So in the center is the reference, that is the slides that we would typically get for our patients. And the top left is the six RR, and quite often our reader will identify six RR actually is better than the standard sequences. In the bottom one, you can see the one RR uh, acquisition. The one on the right side in particular, if you can see it, you can see the diaphragm moving, and that's the ones that quiet under free breathing. Now, more typical, this is an average case. Um, the reference, again, is in this center. And you can see that the definitions of the wall begin to deteriorate just a bit as you uh, eye it through, but they're usually still very good. So these are our score with the x-axis plot out the difference um, technique we use with the leftmost being the references as you can move toward the right side if it's faster and faster accelerations. The two readers are completely independent, but it's surprising we track very much what we do compared to each other. We all see a little bump that is a slight improvement in image actually at 6RR, uh, which is still faster than the asset at 2X. And then the deterioration that we see in the subjective quality at 1RR, which is not surprising. All right, let's look at the quantitative measurements. In the volume quantifications, uh, we use a blind album plot. You can see that it's unbiased and pretty tightly clustered. Most of the cases will fall within plus or minus uh, 20 milliliter in diastolic uh, volumes. For ejection fraction, again, it clusters very well. We do have a few outliers. And interesting, in this examination scheme, if something happened in the reference scan, let's say there's an arrhythmia happened there, then you suddenly it's going to have a bump. Everybody's going to be off. The reason is because the reference is off. But we'll be honest, we're just going to plot everything as they come. But you can see that most of the cases we in cluster about plus or minus 5% in injection fractions. 
Um, each per wall, we look at all six segments, so we end up with about uh, over 200 samples for each of those metrics. So it's a lot of data, all right? Now, I've shown you the blind album plot here, kind of superposed between the three RR and one R acquisitions, because when we look at these very fine detail, we begin to see that the deterioration in one RR does come into play when you look at the statistical performance. So here's an example. The blue line here gives you the three RR performance, which is tighter than C, and the orange line, which represents the one RR performance. The last one I just showed you was thickness, and then for wall motions, you can see that there's a little widening again, as you would see. The orange one here now is the three RR, the uh, gray one is the, um, is the one RR acquisitions. And final wall thickening, what we think about in terms of contractions, um, again, it's just a slightly deteriorations over uh, uh, one RR. So that's the break point where you go from three to one RR. So in summary, reader report there's no loss of diagnostic quality compared to conventional CNE at low RR or moderate um, three RR accelerations. There's no significant difference in volume injection fraction measurement across all accelerations level down to one RR, and that's supported by what the publication says anyway. And the regional figures is an interesting one, such as the wall motion thickness and thickening are best preserved at six to three RR accelerations. The qualifications of the volume ejection fraction at the highest acceleration yields a fourfold reduction in scan time. That's supported by the actual measure, the scan time we did earlier. So we just divide it up. So guess what? It's four times faster than, let's say, a 2x uh, asset. And the evaluation of regional wall motion, if we keep it at 3RR, we still get a 2.4-fold reduction in scan time. So something that took 10 minutes before, now you should be confident we do that in two. That's a lot of gain, actually. All right? There's some kind of references that we have, and that's the end of the talk. Thank you so much. <laughs>